evening folks how's it going out there welcome back here to a wednesday night it is 9 40 p.m california time out here october 1st 2025 yes we are into october already uh latest activity here shows uh looks like some movement there across hawaii uh got a little 2.6 there underneath pahala about 18 miles or so uh underneath that region looking at the earthquake 3d globe here as uh, far as larger scale movement goes, uh, well, looks like most of the activity up here. We got a pretty good cluster up there across the uh, um, north of India here. Some super deep movement there along the Izu Trench. Look at that earthquake right here. That earthquake raised well off the globe, indicating some deeper activity into the Izu Trench. Uh, the USGS, let's see if they're picking up on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh man, there it is. I do see it. There's a reason why that's well beyond the plate boundary here. That's a super deep earthquake. 261 miles deep there for a 4.2 earthquake. I'm telling you guys, now I've been saying this, okay? Don't take my words lightly. Watch the Nankai Trough here, okay? That's an area around Tokyo southward. Uh, there's also some subduction zones there across Taiwan northward this deeper movement i guarantee you I, I i can almost guarantee you with all the stress and strain out here along the philippines indonesia area kamchatka area d the japan region and now some deeper activity there around the izu trench that is putting some mega strain out there along the the uh, subduction zone of the nankai trough i can almost guarantee you that thing uh will probably pop here pretty soon Okay, these deeper quakes there. You gotta gotta look at the um, the movement here of the plates, and I I can show you guys here real quick here. When we get deeper activity up here across the uh, Nankai Trough, or the uh, excuse me the Izu Trench here, the deeper activity obviously adding further strain out there across the Nankai Trough region, right there across the Japan area. I tell you what, it's uh. I do think we'll probably see some larger activity here soon within that region. So it's it's an area we want to watch closely. Okay, it's it's obviously, you know, there's there's a lot of stress been building up there across the region here recently. Um, let's see here. The Philippines definitely rocking and rolling here with some aftershock activity. Um, I don't see anything in terms of any unusual activity. Obviously, we got, got some threes and fours, maybe an occasional five. Um, but from a 6.9 earthquake, that's a pretty decent aftershock sequence out there. So I'm not seeing anything right now that tells me that we're looking at anything bigger than the 6.9 for now. But look at that. Look at that deep earthquake here across the Izu Trench. I'm telling you, the Nankai Trough right now under mega strain. Uh, quite a bit of activity there across the Mediterranean area. Uh, looks like a 2.6 coming in there for now. Uh, let's go ahead and check what's going on up there in uh, is it Idaho, Montana. Let's go see what's going on up there for now. Looks like some maybe some bigger activity up here. I think that's going to be this earthquake right here. Wisdom. Who would have thought? Wisdom, Montana. All right. I, I think we all could use a little bit of wisdom out here, right? Um, that is uh, about 13 miles deep underneath this area. And I can almost guarantee you that showed up there across the Yellowstone seismograph station. So uh, let's go double check that there from the Yellowstone um activity here from the usgs let's go see here real quick stand by there it is that's the earthquake that showed up there in uh montana or towards the idaho area uh it i don't see anything local across the yellowstone area for now these are that's a distant event some of these are local from earlier this morning but i don't see any localized elevated earthquake activity for now and and that's across the uh, Yellowstone National Park area, but it did pick up that 3.4 up there in Montana. Uh, let's check out the tremor maps here real quick. Okay, I I don't want to skip over those, so stand by for a second. 
uh, we're looking at 390 epicenters of slow slip events there across the Cascadia, mainly across the northern area. We are starting to gain a little bit down here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone there for now. Um, but we'll continue to watch that. Obviously, the Cascadia subduction zone is a uh, major area for some big earthquake activity. Let me tell you, we're talking about 9.0 and above. A little clustering going on there across the Calaveras Fault and the Hayward Fault area. Nothing big, just a couple small ones out there. As uh, far as any migration going up northward here from the earthquake this morning. Uh, let me see here. Let me show you guys. Uh, looks like it's... Oh, almost looks like it's off of here. But uh, I could have swore there was some activity stirring up here in the Gulf of uh, California earlier. I don't see any major uptick here across Southern California for now. In fact, most of the movement there below the 2.5 threshold... All this activity, very small microquake activity there today. Um, looking at the uh, rest of the model here, look at this activity here. And it's this is just filling in here where I've talked about in the last day. All right, we've seen a lot of activity here along the Kuril Kamchatka, Philippines area, Indonesia area, seeing the six pointer. It would only make sense here to see that middle point boundary stir up. And man, let me tell you. It's uh, it's definitely rocking and rolling out there right now. Deeper activity there along the Kuril Ke the uh, uh, Izu Trench in the Japan region. Nothing else showing up here along the Nankai Trough, but I guarantee you, we ne we definitely need to watch this area because there is some potential there for some larger earthquake activity there around the southern coast there of Japan. Right there's been uh, a number of mega quake warnings out there put out on the Nankai trough here in the last year or so. Uh, and it would make sense because of all the elevated activity here stirring up across that region. Uh, the Hawaii area, let me show you guys real quick here. Kilauea Volcano, which has come to a pause, all right? That has uh, come to a pause right now. Kilauea Volcano, there we go. I went over it like twice. <laughs> it's a it's a Wednesday night. It's the middle of the week, right? I think we can make a couple mistakes out here. Um, the webcam imagery up here across the Kilauea Volcano. Let me show you guys here real quick. Shows that we should be ending the eruption. Look at that lava field out there. A lot of luminescence going on there from the heated areas of the lava. It lasted for a very short period. That's the Kilauea Volcano. Let me show you guys the inflation chart here real quick. Because uh, it, uh, let's, let's go take a look here real quick. It, uh, man, it lasted for uh, a little while. This is the eruption here. Very sharp eruption and a very sharp time period there in terms of the eruption time period. Now we're starting to go back up here. So, um, you know, if history tells us, we should be looking at uh, episode 35 in terms of eruption here in about two weeks or so. It's been a rinse and repeat cycle there across the Kilauea Volcano since December of last year. So, Nothing changing there for now. There's all the aftershock activity there across the Philippines. As uh, far as any newer movement out there across the globe goes, uh, I'm just taking a look here. A lot of activity up there around Iceland. Some fives and some fours stirring up. Um, a lot of newer activity up here across the area of Afghanistan southeastward there across the area of northern India towards the Myanmar region. Uh, but uh, I don't see anything big going on. Uh, but again, you know, things are uh, they're starting to stir up out here for sure across the, uh, the planet. Space weather activity. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, we're looking at, uh, well, what looks like a G2 class solar storm here. 
that uh, wow looks like it's definitely stirring up out here may have to go out there myself and see if we got auroras out there this evening uh, some major roar activity there across Alaska Canada dipping down into the northern tier states here that is a uh, a result here of, uh, of I believe the solar wind stream flowing into the planet although in the last couple days we've gotten a stir up for no reason at all uh, there was really no culprit in terms of the uh, elevated space weather activity out here but things are stirring up it does look like we're stirring up into the g1 g2 class storm category so uh, if you're a aurora watcher watch that here for tonight because obviously if you got clear skies and you're in the northern tier states you're gonna see it um, there's a corona hole out here 84 and 83 that's currently facing the earth um, but the culprit of this let's see here there's a high speed solar wind stream there kicking up earlier today up into the 800 km range um, and things have been favorable for aurora activity notice that separation there between the white and the red lines that's a BTBZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field that's allowing the auroras to amplify out here this evening. So that uh, looks like it may continue with that ongoing separation there. So auroras will be likely out there across the uh, northern tier states. Get out there if you want to see some auroras. Uh, there's a G2 class storm in effect there. As far as any major solar flare activity, well, there's not a whole lot going on there. There's some C and some M flare activity. Taking a look here at the uh, magnet magnetogram imagery. Uh, look at this image over here. That's quite a bit of popcorn colors going on there. Uh, a major area of concern, but that is facing off towards the western limb. We are left with a couple areas out here. Center disk, 4232 and 4236 here. Uh, that does show some complexity. We'll definitely watch that here in the coming days. Overall flare threat. Shows a 60% chance here for some M flare activity. X flare around 15% chance. But the auroras, they're stirring up this evening. So check them out there if you get a chance. Um, let's see, anything else going on out here? Uh, you know, it's just kind of a kind of a typical day out here. Although uh, some areas of interest, deeper activity there across the Izu Trench. A lot of swarming going on there around the Philippines from that uh, 6.9. Uh, I do think we need to watch the Nankai Trough. We have not stirred in here yet. This is one area right around this region here that has not stirred up in terms of earthquake activity. All right, so watch that. Um, the uh, seismograph stations out there pretty quiet for now folks so uh, just be on guard stay safe we will catch you guys out here for the Thursday morning update I appreciate everyone jumping in commenting out here and uh, if you comment on this video and you're watching the, the end of this video um, I will give you a like or heart and I will comment back that's a promise if you're watching the end of this video let me know you're watching the, the end of the video and I will uh, will definitely give you guys a heart and a thumbs up and a uh, comment. But I do appreciate all the, uh, the viewership out there. We definitely we do. So um, have a good one. We'll see you guys out here tomorrow for the uh, Thursday morning update. Take care.